Praise the Lord. Thank you for all of us that have come for this breakfast meeting. And I pray, as we just prayed, that the Lord will speak to us. The topic, as you have heard, is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin, not sins, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus, as the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Now, that statement has a background. And I want to begin with that background, which will help us to learn on that statement that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You remember when Adam and Eve sinned, they hid themselves. And when the Lord asked, where are you? They, they were hiding. And uh, the Lord slaughtered an animal that his blood was shed and he covered their nakedness. He slaughtered an animal and covered their nakedness. That was the first blood of covering Shem. Then in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, chapter 3, verse 15, the Lord says, I will put an enmity between you, that's the devil, that's the snake, between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, in other that's going to be for her, and he shall bruise his feet. So right from the beginning, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, the seed of woman is guaranteed to have success. His victory has been foretold in Genesis chapter 3. Again, as we look at the background, we see the substitutionary death forecast. Christ's substitutionary death has been forecast. And to help us pick up that story, let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 22. Genesis 22, verse 1. It came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said to him, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I shall show you. I pick up the story from verse 5. The young man had said, hey, I see the fire, I see the wood. Don't let's speak of verse 7. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father. And he said, here you yeah, are, my son. And he said, look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built the altar and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, the son whom he loved. He put him on the altar on the wood, and Abraham stretched, stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay him. But the angel of the Lord called Abraham from heaven, said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, 
do not lay your hand on the lad or to do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son whom you love. Then look at verse 13. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up a burnt offering instead of his son. That instead is a very, very interesting concept. His son, Isaac, was saved because there was a ram which died instead. So Christ is the lamb who died instead of us, as we shall see. By the way, as the Muslims continue in their fast, they know this story very well, except when you are sharing with them, you don't tell them um, Abraham's son, Isaac. Just say, otherwise you enter into an argument. They will say the son is Ishmael. The son is Ishmael. Uh, so you don't enter into who's the kind who, into those names. You say, you remember that story? And then you tell them the ram that we talk about is Jesus Christ who died for us. So they connect very easily with the story. So here we see the concept of the substitutionary death picked out better well. He died, uh, the ram was provided so that the son may not die. Again, let's go back to the past to see the Passover lamb without blemish. <coughs> Exodus. Twelve. Exodus chapter twelve. The Passover instructed. By the way, it's important to know that whatever was written in the former times was written for our instruction. So that by the encouragement of the scripture, we may have hope. That's what Paul says in Romans 15, 4. So what has been written in the former times was written for our instruction. As we are going to see, the play over what happens or what happened then and what happened on Monday, like today, to Friday, knowing that Jesus Christ uh, entered Jerusalem, Luke chapter 19, uh, at the Palm the Sunday, and then what happens on Monday to Friday. That's what we're going to examine. But let us go back to Exodus chapter 12. Now the Lord, verse one, now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying, this month shall be your beginning of month. It shall be the first month of the year for you. This month being the beginning of the year for you, he says, but three, Speak to all the congregations of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, mark that day, tenth. On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself the lamb 
according to the house of his father, the lamb for a household. And if the household is too small, the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of persons, according to each man's need, you shall make your account of the lamb. Five. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Not that. A male of the first year, you make it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th. Those are five days. The reason for keeping it from 10th to the 14th day is to ensure that during those days, when it was set apart, it had no blemish because it could have been possible during those days of setting apart to find some blemish on the ship. But they would examine it for five days to ensure that it had no blemish. And then, verse seven, take some, they shall kill it, and then take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the house. Verse 12, for I will pass through the land of Egypt on the night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and the beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now, verse 13. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses when where you are. And when I see the blood that is of the animal without blemish, I will pass over, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Jesus, our Passover lamb. Let's see what happens in the Gospel of Luke. For the five days when he was being cross-examined to see whether there was in a blemish. Luke chapter 20. Remember, remember, um, he has descended. And the people have been worshiping, have been laying their clothes and have entered Jerusalem. That's on Palm Sunday and he's been weeping because people did not understand their time of visitation. They did not understand their time of visitation. Now Jesus has entered. Now the time for cross-examination begins to see whether there is a blemish, to see whether Jesus is a fit, like the lamb in the book of Exodus. Like the lamb in the book of Exodus would be examined to see whether it was fit to be a Passover lamb. In Exodus chapter 20, I think that is a Monday, they begin to examine Christ's authority. Exodus chapter 20. They ask him, now it happened in one of those days, as he taught in the people in the temple and preached the gospel, that the chief priests and the scribes together with the elder confronted him, spoke to him saying, tell us by what authority are you doing this thing? Or who is, or who is it who gave you this authority? But he answered, said to them, I will also ask you one thing. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or 
from men. So they reasoned among themselves, they couldn't answer that. And they said, we don't know. He also said to them, I will also not tell you. So they were trapping him. Then they asked him another question regarding paying taxes to Caesar. Verse 20, chapter 20. So they watched him and said, spies who pretend to be righteous that they might seize on his words in order to deliver him the power and authority of the governor. They asked him, say, teacher, we know that you say and teach rightly and you do not show personal favoritism, <clears throat> but teach the way of God in truth. Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? A yes or no would have trapped Jesus Christ. But because he's full of wisdom, he perceived their craftiness and he said, What do you test? Show me a denarius. And when they showed him, he got it and he said, Whose inscription does this image have? And they answered the scissors. Then he answered them, Render to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. They failed to trap him. Then there are those who don't believe in the resurrection. They asked him regarding marriage in Luke chapter 26, verse 33 onwards, the Sadducees. They were asking about the resurrection that a man married a lady, that man died, another one married her, again they died, and see there were seven of them who married the same woman. In the time to come, whose wife she did be, and he answered them correctly. In the time to come, neither will there be married or being given to marry. They were silenced. Since they were silenced and they had more questions, he also challenged them in verse 41, chapter 20. Whose son is the Christ? Seeing that David called him his Lord, and yet he was a grandson, and they could not answer that. They kept quiet. They were all silent. Again, he passes the tests. Now let us see what happened Friday. Chapter 23. Chapter 23. Remember, we are still in the five days of Exodus, or where the lamb was set apart on the 10th day, and it's going to be slaughtered on the 14th day five days later, provided there was no blemish. Chapter 23, Jesus has been handed over to Pilate and he has asked him a number of questions. Eventually, this is what Pilate says. Chapter 23, verse 22. You know, they were shouting this one, they were shouting another, they were shout. He said, I find no reason. This man is, this man is righteous. I find no reason for killing him. You know, that's when they instead, we want him crucified. Let him be crucified. Verse 23 had said to them, the third type, why? What evil has he done? I find no reason for death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. Now that was a verdict from Pilate that this man is innocent. In other words, he is blameless. Fit for 
slaughter as a Passover lamb. Is fit for slaughter as a Passover lamb. And that statement is made by Pilate. Now, let us look forward now to John. What does John say regarding Islam? Our main passage. All that has been about the ground. Let's go to John chapter 1. The Gospel of John, chapter 1. Let's read the Gospel of John, chapter 1. Let's begin reading from verse 29. John, chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And remember, it is sin and not sin. He deals with our sinfulness. Is with our sinfulness so that we may not sin. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Verse 30. This is he of whom I say, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. That's why we saw in Exodus. In the Genesis, he was before me. The man who preferred for me, because he was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that he is the Son of God. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now the word is very clear. Isaiah 53, 6, all of us, the like sheep have gone astray. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of our soul. Romans 3, 23, all of us have sinned. And we fall short the glory of God. There is a gap, seen a gap between us and God. It's a big gap. And unfortunately, the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that the wages of sin, death. That's the penalty for sin. The wages of sin is death. The writer of Hebrews says it's appointed for man to die once and after that judgment. So Christ paid the penalty because Christ comes as the free gift that God gives. Jesus took our sin that we might be close with his righteousness. Let's go to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Again, here we are dealing with aspects of the divine exchange on the cross. Second Corinthians, chapter five, verse twenty-one. That for he made him who knew no sin, to be sin for us, 
that he might become, sorry, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The divine exchange. Look our sins that we might be clothed with his righteousness. Died that we might be was punished that we might be forgiven. Became a curse that might be blessed along with Abraham. Was blessed in all things. For the Bible says, cast is any man who hangs a cross. Jesus became poor that we might be rich. His body was broken that we might be whole. By his strength, we have been healed. Jesus is the substitute. He is our substitute. Look our sin as we have seen, that we might be clothed with his righteousness. Look our shame, that we might be glorified. So this Jesus has bridged the gap between man and God, the sin gap. But the Bible is very Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. These days we are hearing that there are many other ways of reaching God. No, no, no. He says, I am the way. He is not a way. I am the way. He was there in the beginning. He is now, forever he shall be. There is no other leader who has died and rose again. Jesus, away. This Jesus deals with our sin problem even now. Let's turn to the book of 1 John. 1 John, chapter 2. 1 John. Chapter 2, verse 1. This is what he says. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we'll have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So he's interceding for us. He ever lives to make intercession for us. Hebrews 7, 25, that's what he's doing. Dealing with our sin problem, making intercessions for us. Now, as I close, let us learn some lessons from John. It is John, actually, who was a cousin. He was a cousin of the Lord Jesus Christ. They knew each other. You remember when Mary visited Elizabeth, the Holy Spirit had filled John. And so they knew each other, they were cousins. It is this John that pointed Jesus to the watching world that this is. This is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. But now see what happens. John the Baptist is in a prison. In Matthew 11, Matthew chapter 11, it says, now it came to pass. When Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples, that he departed from there, teach and to preach in the city. And John heard in the prison about the works of Christ. He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Are you the one coming? Or should we look for another? Are you the one coming? 
should we look for another? When in a prison, when in a times of darkness, do not doubt Christ. The God who made mountains, he also made valley. The Lord who made light also made darkness. And all are good. Remember the creation story? He said, behold, it was good. Let me share with you a scripture to show you the importance of the ministry of darkness under this book. Comparing Paul, sorry, John's imprisonment at the time of darkness and I did. The God who made the light also made darkness. The God who made valleys also made mountains. And they are all useful for our growth. The reason that John was beginning to doubt his cousin was because he was in a problem. Isaiah chapter 50, as we call it. Isaiah 50, verse 10. Who among you fears the Lord? Who obeys the voice of his servant? Who walks in a darkness? and has no light, let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God even during that time of darkness. Look, all of you who kindle the fire, who encircle yourselves with sparks, walk in the light of your fire, in the sparks you have kindled. This you shall have from my hand, you shall lie down in torment. Who is it that walks in darkness and has no light, yet trusts in me? Those times of prison, those times of darkness will come to us. They are good for us. It is he who said in the word, I think in Proverbs 4.18, that the path of the righteous becomes bright and the brighter and the brighter each coming day. Let us trust in the Lord. For Jesus said, I say this to you, I have told you all these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Behold, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. May the Lord bless you. Father, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for loving us so much and for giving us Jesus to die instead of us as a Passover lamb, who, O Lord our God, was found to be without blemish, even by the judgments of this world. We want to thank you for Jesus, who not only interceded for us, who not only interceded for Luke, I mean for, 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 for Peter in Luke uh, 22, verse 31, 33, who not only interceded for the disciples in John 17, but who intercedes even for us in heaven. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. May God bless you, my brother and sisters. Have a blessed Holy Week. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Thank you, Uncle Peter, for bringing this out clearly. He who has an ear, let them hear what the Lord is speaking this morning. We thank you, precious Lord, for indeed you're the Lamb who came to save us, who came to take away the sin of the world, who came to reconcile us with God. We thank you. We glorify your name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for your servant. Lord bless him, continue using him for the glory of your name. Count it on him, O oh God, my master, that he studies your word, O oh God, to speak to your people, O oh God, my master, and brings it out clearly, O oh God. Bless him and all around him, O oh God, my master. 
sanctify him with your blood, O oh God, my master, that he will always see you in every situation for the glory and honor of your holy name. Yes, brethren, um, we want to thank the Lord for the word. It was so clear. It was so revealing how Jesus, the lamb that was slain, was first tested to find out if there was blemish upon it. And you know this revelation was way before in the Old Testament, as the, as the servant of the Lord said. Father, we want to thank you for you sent us your son, Jesus Christ, without blemish, without spot, O King of Kings. But we decided, O God, that he should be crucified, O King of Kings, for that was the right time for him to be crucified, O God, as you had revealed before in Genesis and Exodus, O King of Kings, that, Lord, you would for the Passover to happen, O King of Kings, for us to be set free as blame, a, a blameless lamb, O God, a lamb without blemish, O God, a lamb without, uh, uh, without, which was spotless, needed to be offered for the sacrifice of sin, for the redemption of man, O King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you had no blemish, but Lord, for us to be set free from our sin, Lord, my master, you sent your only and only begotten son, O King of kings, so that, Lord, you died for us, O King of kings, so that we can be saved. We thank you. We glorify your holy name, O God. Thank you for the son that came to die for us, O King of kings. Him who knew no sin, O God, Father, he died so that we can be clothed with righteousness, O God, my master. Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for, for you were broken so that we might be whole, O God, my master. We thank you for your son, O God, who came to, 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 to cover the gap between us and you, God. Father, Lord, my master, you, your son came as the way, O King of Kings, came as the way to, 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 to return to you, to return to you. Father, I pray for your servant here that is here seated on, on this forum, O God, my master, that has not, O God, my master, stepped on this gap, O God, my master, stepped on this bridge, O God, my master, to be reconciled to you, that they shall be reconciled to your God, my master. <clears throat> For Lord, you are broken that we, were, we might be whole. You came to, to close the gap between us and God because sin had separated us. Oh, King of Kings, I pray, oh God, that you forgive us when we have not believed, oh God, my master, because Lord, you had revealed yourself to John, oh God, when he was going to baptize Jesus. Moreover, <coughs> Jesus was his cousin. Lord, many of the times we pass through darkness, oh God. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we, we tend to forget that you care. We tend to forget that you are interceding for us. We tend to forget that you, you mind about us. <coughs> And yet, Lord, you created the light and also created the darkness. And yet you created the mountains and the valleys, oh God. And so, Lord, my master, I pray that when we are at the mountain, we will not forget that the valley is there, oh God. And when we are in the valley, we will not forget that <coughs> one time we will be on the mountain, oh King of Kings. Above all, Lord, I pray. Uh, we will desire, we will admire, oh God, my master, to, to sit with you, to sit with you, oh God, my master, in the heavenly places, oh God, my master. Father, that, Lord, we will pursue salvation, oh God, my master. For, Lord, you have promised that you are interceding for us, oh King of kings, my master, with groanings, oh God, that cannot be expressed, oh God, my master. 
We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your comfort, O oh God, my master. And Father, Lord, my master, as we learn these studies, oh God, my master, I pray that you speak to someone who is there discouraged, oh God, of what they are passing through, oh God. Father, Lord, that you will remind them that you came to close the gap, that you came so that they may be set free. And Father, Lord, who, whom you set free, oh God, is free indeed, O oh King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you. We thank you. Because, Lord, it was out of love, O King of kings, it was out of love that you sent your son, O God, that, Lord, we will get out of the prison of sin, O King of kings. It was out of love, O God, my master. And so help us to rely on you, O God, my master, even in that trying time, to rely on you, O God, even when we are up the mountain, O King of Kings, my master. And Father, as you say, O God, I pray that your path will be brighter and brighter every day, O King of Kings, for your servants, O God. We trust in you, O God, my master. For Lord, my master, by your stripes we are healed, O God, my master. We thank you, Lord, my master. Because, because you died, O King of Kings, because you died, Jesus Christ, you are seated on the throne, O King of Kings. And Lord, help us to remember that you are coming as a judge, O God, my master. But Lord, with you, because you died and rose again, O God, my master, we have triumphed over the enemy, the devil, God, who came to steal, to kill, and to destroy, O God, my master. We bless you. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord, for indeed you're interceding for us. Lord, I pray for someone that is discouraged on this forum, that, Lord, they will be encouraged in you for the glory and honor of your holy name. I bless you. I honor you. I glorify your name. O oh, Lamb of God, who came, who comes to, 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 to reconcile us to the Father, we bless you to take away the sins of the world. We bless you, the sin of the world, O oh God, that we will be reconciled to the Father, O oh God. We worship you. We glorify your name. And Lord, I pray that you continue revealing yourself, O oh God, to your servants, O oh God, that are listening, O oh King of kings and Lord of lords. We worship you. We honor you. For it is in the mighty name of just Christ I have prayed and believed. Amen.